Hi, I'm Megan Watkins from the Institute for Culture and Society at the University of Western Sydney. I want to provide a short account of habit and habituation, governance and the social. The introduction to the special issue of Body and Society on Habit, which was edited by Tony Bennett, Francis Dodsworth, Greg Noble, Mary Pooby and me. The introduction to the issue does a number of things. Firstly, it provides a rationale for our focus on habit. Secondly, it considers the key themes and issues that we feel are pertinent to an investigation of the topic, together with some discussion of a range of different theorists from Aristotle to Bourdieu who have given habit their attention. And lastly, we provide a brief account of the nine articles and two shorter commentaries that comprise the issue, written by scholars from across the humanities and social sciences. So firstly, why habit? Habit is crucial for understanding human conduct and behaviour. Habits are constitutive of who we are. They provide an explanation for why and how we do what we do. As Dewey explains, they form our effective desires and they furnish us with our working capacities. Dewey's take on habit, however, tends more towards a positive, emphasising our reliance on habits to function effectively and to make automatic, routine aspects of life, which can then free us for more creative and analytic pursuits. Not all treatment of habit, however, is so positive, and in fact a split between the positive and negative aspects of habit is what characterises accounts across various disciplines. Aristotle, for example, highlights the positive dimension of habit, which is also evident in the Christian theology of Thomas Aquinas through to the philosophies of Locke and Hume. Positive takes on habit are also found in the work of the 19th century French philosopher Félix Ravisson, who influenced Bergson's account of habit and memory, which in turn was instrumental to Deleuze's conceptualisation of habit in Difference and Repetition. Theorists whose work is variously examined in contributions by Claire Carlyle, Melanie White and Elizabeth Gross in this issue. Similarly influential in Deleuze's productive take on habit is Gabriel Tard's account of the role of imitation in social life, a discussion of which can be found in Lisa Blackman's contribution to the issue. In contrast to this particular lineage, there are those that highlight the negative dimensions of habit or habits, seeing them more as a form of enslavement, emphasising the relation between habit and will, with human agents, agency dependent upon the ability to govern the will rather than to be governed by it. Such accounts are characteristic of Descartes and Kant and in different ways have influenced the work of Durkheim, Maus and Bourdieu. Yet habit for each of these three is not so much conceived in terms of the logic guiding individual practice, but habit, or the broader term habitus, as a mechanism for social reproduction. This disti distinction between habit and habitus is taken up, for example, by Nick Crossley in this issue, who attributes Mouths and Bourdieu's use of habitus over habit as a way of distancing themselves from the more mechanistic understandings of habit characteristic of behavioural psychology. But more than this, that habitus, as Waquant also explains, is more akin to Aristotle's notion of hexis, an acquired moral character that affects one's feelings and actions and so has a much broader frame than individual habits. The socially reproductive nature of habit is central to Durkheim's account of the division between primitive and modern societies, the ways in which he conceives of the former as governed by instinct and habitual behaviour and the latter possessing the means to fashion um, its behaviour through self-reflexive will. It is this distinction which provides the rationale for forms of colonial governmentality and remains a defining feature of Western liberalism, a theme explored in Tony Bennett's contribution to this issue. Habit is indeed an intriguing concept. As Poovey and Cla uh, uh, Cro Crook sorry, point out in their commentary pieces, it operates as a switch point between some of our fundamental categories, nature, culture, individual, social, mind, body. This special issue provides a productive engagement with habit, with contributions from those already mentioned, together with Simon Lumsden's timely account of habit and the limits of the autonomous subject, in which he draws on Hegel to discuss the difficulties of modernity and changing habits. Dodsworth's historical engagement with habit as both an explanation for and saviour from criminality in 18th century England, and Noble's account of multicultural habits and everyday cosmopolitanism, which poses questions around methodologies for investigating habit and the value of ethnography for capturing how and where habits are acquired. We hope the issue provides some interesting debate around the theoretical and empirical value of the idea of habit, and I hope you enjoy reading it.